Hey everyone, my name is Amber and thanks for joining me for a townhouse development feasibility and um, what we are doing here is using the one minute feasibility tool which is so that you can quickly figure out whether or not a project has any substance, has any legs uh, and whether or not you should investigate it further because every time you know, you come across a project, it, you don't necessarily have all the information. And at that stage, you're, the only pressing question that you have is whether or not you should spend more time investigating it further. And that's where one minute feeder comes in. You know, this is the first step and the most common stumbling block for aspiring developers. They are literally surround, surrounded by properties, but they cannot find anything to develop. And that is because you know, uh, it's not their fault. It's it's just that they've never been taught or they don't have a tool to be able to quickly assess the potential of a site, uh, you know, and, uh, and find a property to develop. But, you know, most people get stuck with uh, so many details uh, or missing pieces that they can't even figure out whether or not they should spend more time into the project or not. So this is just a summary page and I will walk you through all the screens and input cells as well. But in a nutshell, we are buying the land for 2.1 mil and you can read more about it in the blog post there. Uh, we are planning on developing six townhouses and that also is because we have established that the adjoining site almost has So there is a good chance that we should be able to get six on our side as well. And uh, that's pretty much it. The project's gonna make about 15.6 and we'll get to it how and, and using what assumptions and so on. So let's dive straight into it. So let's dive into the assumptions um, and what are the things that we are assuming and what are the things that the feasibility can do for us in under one minute. So by the time you finish watching this video, you'll know exactly how to quickly assess properties and you'll suddenly see property opportunities everywhere while you're walking while you're and that's how this tool has been designed it, it can it can run on your phone it can do all sorts of things for you so let's dive straight into it so here are our assumptions so we are asking price uh, someone's asking for this block of land for 2.1 mil and we've quickly looked and figured out that you know we've got uh, we've got six units here one two three four five six so it is safe to assume that on a site like this i should be able to put six uh, on this block um, but at this stage i don't know for sure but i've got to be able to do numbers on it because certainly the asking price does look like that they are uh, they're assuming that you should be able to fit six on them so and, and you do uh you know this is an established suburb it's 20 you know kilometers from the cbd and a three bedroom townhouses are in the range of you know 870 960 if i make them a little bit uh, better for example if i make them high end or a little bit better appliances and so on i should be able to get 950 because they say 870 950 but you know with what the market is where the market is at i think 950 would be the actual figure uh, i believe that i can put six into three bedroom townhouses uh, on this 280 square meter lot and um let's go let's go from there so so in here under one minute fee though you can quickly come in enter your currency symbol there are more details if you don't know how to do or what you're doing just click on this button here and a video would pop up that will walk you through exactly what you need to do uh, uh, um, in every screen so to speak so let's say you've got currency symbol you put in your currency symbol let's say if you're from 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 another currency that for example you're using a pound symbol or a euro symbol or some some other currency you can change that and it'll change everywhere uh, you can select your gsd wad hsd add the percentage for example if you're from new zealand you would put 15 over here uh, select the type of development so in our case it's going to be residential and interest calculation i tend to use 30 60 what that basically means is that we are assuming that there are 30 days in a month and 360 days in a year if you use 3365, it basically means that, you know, 30 months, 30 days a month and 365 days a year. But that would reduce the amount of interest that I would, I would account for in my feasibility. And just to be on a safer side, you know, I tend to be three, use 3360, but it is there if you know that the year has 365 days, you can select 365 days. Uh, while you're doing your numbers. So unit of measurement is meter square for us. If it's square feet, I can select something else. And yes, because we're in Australia uh, right now and this is going to be uh, under the margin scheme, so I can select that. Now, if this is not 
let's say you're from US and that doesn't apply to you all you have to do is come and select NA and then the whole thing is disappears and you can do your numbers exactly how you would do anywhere else in the world but let's leave it at GST because that's where we are at the moment and under sensitivity I've allowed about 25% it's a little bit higher uh, but I'm gonna leave it at 25% uh, cost sensitivity and sales sensitivity what I want to see is that what would happen if my costs jumped up by 5% increments and what would happen if my sales went down by 5% in, uh, decrements uh, what would be the impact on my overall feasibility for this project so let's go into our units uh, units we know that we can assume we basically looked at the site and said hey you know uh, it seems that uh, looking at the neighborhood character, we should be able to put six on this proc. So I'm going to do a numbers on the six. Every selling price per unit, I'm going to put 950. When I sell it, it would include GST on an average because I've been building them for so long. Uh, I know that a three bedroom townhouse, uh, the total built area would be 145 square meters. And when it comes to construction costs, I can use a ballpark number. I could say construction cost per unit uh that means i have no idea i've just made a few phone calls to a builder just to figure out you know what is it what does it cost to build a three tunnels development and they've given me a ballpark number let's say 400k or whatever it is but in this scenario i know the numbers so i'm gonna go okay i'm gonna be able to build them at 2200 dollars a square meter um i can change that i can you know add a few things and when i build them i'll be claiming gst on the input tax credit as well and I'm going to slap on another 5% contingency on my construction cost, which will also include GST. When it comes to my cost, I know my, I'm purchasing the land for not, well, at this stage, I'm not purchasing anything. I am keying in what the, what the asking price is in the project. So let's say 2.1 mil, and that won't include GST because it's residential. I'll be paying five and a half percent on stamp duty. If I don't know what that is, let's say I can come in here and I can say, okay, my stamp duty is 100K, for example. So I can, I can add that or I can give it a number, let's say five and a half percent, and then select whether or not it has GST or not. Next thing I wanna do is allow for some closing costs for settlement. So if I've got a quote from a lawyer that says $2,500 for the legal fees to close the deal, um, I can put that number here or I can allow 0.1% let's say but of what off as a percentage of the land value so any of these little eyes that you see if you hover your mouse over it it'll show you what are you allowing there so for example construction contingency that I've allowed here is based on you know this is construction contingency this is based on a consultants are based on six percent of the construction cost if i don't know the exact number now because i don't have a permit in hand uh, which is not ready yet uh, because i need to purchase need to go through the development approval process which is the da process uh, or the permitting process i still need to allow for some percentage to go with um, development contributions uh, this is as a percentage of the land or if you have a number in mind that you can find out from your previous projects or a new project or you can pick up the phone call the council find out this is what I'm planning on developing how are you guys calculating the council contributions for it uh, closing costs commissions and so on those will go here miscellaneous costs this is again if I hover my mouse over the little eye icon here I'm allowing a $3,000 miscellaneous cost per unit and all of those would have uh, GST included in them so ne next we have finance and finance is again twofold one is land finance which is when I have bought a land it hasn't got a permit on it it is going to be nine months or 12 months or 15 months or whatever the timeline is going to be before I can commence construction for me to go through the permitting process and get ready with my construction drawings, get ready with everything that I need to commence construction. So that might take 12 months. So right now, all I'm doing is purchasing the land. So if I was <clears throat> to purchase the land, I have to borrow money in order to do that. And that way I can put in 70%, which is the total land debt against the LVR or LTC, which is a loan to value ratio on the land value or the loan to cost ratio. I can add a setup fee. These things do not attract GST, but if they do, you can just turn that on or turn it off. So any number that you add here, we assume that it is inclusive of the GST component. So interest rate, for example, is gonna be 4%. Uh, for this example, is 4%. 
um, and uh, let's say for GST I can turn that on or not um, in interest rates do not have interest costs do not have GST on them uh, at least not in Australia so that is why I leave them off so but I'm gonna allow for 12 months of that time then I've got construction debt that's coming in and I'm basing that total debt on the total development cost of the project I know that if I've got you know whatever the if I have hundred dollars in total cost I should be able to borrow 70 percent so I put in 70 percent as my total debt position for this uh, a setup fee and the loan draw intensity we explained what that is but uh, in a nutshell remember that you can't you do not draw the entire construction debt on day one you do that based on your progress claims based on an s curve distribution uh, which is a technical term um, where the construction loan is drawn out it can start off slower then you know suddenly shoot up and then plateau again off that hence the reason is called an s curve um, an interest rate and then we've got a loan duration for the construction period so this assumes that by let's say it's even let's say it's 12 but I know that it's going to take me 12 months to build it, but then another three months to settle all the pre-sales and get all the money out. So that's why I'm putting in 15% straight away. Remember, this is a one minute fee. This is supposed to give you results within one minute. So anytime you're spending more money on this, more time on this, uh, time is money. <laughs> um, uh, that means you, you either don't know what you're doing or you need to sign up for this and, and and you know post your project in our uh, in our forum so that I can help you out with uh, with helping you you know articulate exactly what you're trying to do and how you can apply uh, that to one minute fizo or smart feasibility calculator or any of other applications that are coming up. So once you're ready, you go straight into summary and then you have got all the different metrics that are available. Um, there's a link in the description of this video uh, where you can see the published version of this. Uh, or you can go to the main blog post where this video is embedded uh, or you can sign up for one minute fees so if you haven't signed up for it i highly recommend this the reason especially if you are starting out and you got no idea uh the kind of numbers uh the kind of projects that you might have to run numbers on i say start off with the one minute fee though because it is like the main feasibility that uh, with all the uh, with with all the core components of a feasibility. So I cut my teeth on this thing, but I developed it from scratch. Like I used to have, so I had so many different models, uh, been developing applications since 2018 now. And uh, only now that we've put, we've tested them thoroughly, we've done everything. And now we decided to move from Google Sheet to, uh, to our own very own platform which has many different applications and we are always developing and releasing new ones that cater to a particular scenario so have a look at this blog post um, uh, I explain all the different metrics what they are it has everything that you actually need uh, this is the published version over here you can go straight there that shows you you know what you allowed what, what are the costs for uh, land acquisition development costs finance costs you've got different contingency on construction what is the contingency included into this project right here um, you've got net GST liability, what is that going to be up after the input credits have been claimed? Uh, then we've got a sensitivity analysis that shows you this is what we make. So this is, these are the sensitivity assumptions that we made at the beginning of the feasibility where we said what would happen if the sales that I have put in were to go up by 5% or go down by 5%. Now it doesn't have to be 5%. 5% is very uh, steep, so to speak. Uh, but it can be in increments of 3% and so does the cost. So if you've allowed something, if the, if you have a 10% cost blowout on a $3 million project, that's 300,000. So you have to remember that, you know, it's, uh, uh that's, that's a lot of money. Uh, so that means that's why this is a one minute fee. So this should give me a very good feel for the project. Of whether or not I should investigate further because I'm telling you that it is very hard to do a detailed feasibility for any project especially when you are not committed to it um, and you're still looking at it because you only you can only go step by step you can look at a broad broad stroke feasibility which is the one minute fee though you look at it and you say hey this looks like it's it's good let's refine it further 
And what that is, that is what we do for smart feasibility in smart feasibility calculator, which is a one step up because, <clears throat> and if your project starts and finishes between, uh, between 24 to 18 months, uh, between 24 to 36 months, even it's, um, smart feasibility calculator is more than enough for what you are planning on doing with the project. Um, any over that is going to be the lead developer plus, which is a full detailed cash flow scenario and all that. When we'll, we'll show you what they are, uh, when it is released. Uh, so, and these are all the different sensitivity tables. So have a look, read through the, the blog post here and, um, sign up for edge and post a reply there. Thanks.